ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ट्रांसलेशन Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto the supreme who is who in his unlimited unmanifest form has expanded the cosmic manifestation the form of the totality of the universe he possesses the external internal energies and the mixed energy called marginal potency which consists of all living entities purport the lord is endowed with unlimited potency parashi shakti and the highest sweet thing which is summarized as three namely external internal and margin the external potency manifests in this material world uh, The internal potency manifests in the spiritual way. The marginal potency manifests in the living entity. So a mixture of internal and external potency. The living entity being part and parcel of the world of the mind is actually internal potency, but because it's being in contact with the material energy, it is an emanation of material and spiritual energy. The Supreme Personality that has is a type. He is engaged in spiritual transfer. Material energy is only his external manifestation. And the Lord, 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 Namaste, Bhakti, Vedanta, Swami, Niti, Vamane. Namaste, Sarvish, Bhakti, Deva, Vaila, Vaila, Kishwarini. Yom Se Se Sumi, Vahari, Vashyakti, Yerani, Sathani, Vamsa, Sathya, Pamani, Vashyakti, Vakshindu, Vare, Vishyaka. Sitaram, Bhagani, Vay, Vaishya, 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 Vaha. Vaishya, Krishna, Sarin, Vaila, 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 Vaila. Be brave to give an honor to the last of the joy of the women, but it is to have a wonderful opportunity. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Rama. So the totality, the totality of all of the energy in the summarization of here, external, internal, and margin. Within these three categories, there is Subcategories of different entities also that are functional for both the external and internal potency. The marginal potency is the Jesus Son. He's marginal because the, the Supreme Lord is unlimited. And because he is unlimited, he also has to have limited potencies. Limited potencies are they are called the divinamsa or the jiva souls. So we make up the limited potency of the absolute truth, which is in the external, the internal energy. But that internal energy has a tendency to become covered by the external energy when it leaves the association of its source. Or is outside, just like a spark, a fire coming out of a blazing fire. When it leaves the fire, it, it turns into a little cinder and falls, and is no longer a, has glowing propensity. <laughs> If you take that same piece of carbon and again place it into the fire, it will 
again very brightly. Assuming the limited deeper souls, with the limited potency of the absolute truth, they're called Vivanamsa, they become under under the what is called the external energy of the Lord, which is the Bahiranga Shakti, which creates the idea that the living entity is the same as that energy. And this is the illusion, we call it. Uh, the uh, Maya, or the, the, the deluding potency of the Supreme Lord, creates this idea that the living entity is of the same nature as the external potency. And as soon as it uh, comes under that influence, it becomes covered, and its glowing particle is no longer alive, although it remains in a dormant stage. And so, um, being in the material world, we are uh, outside of our uh, natural capacity for existence. Therefore, everyone struggles, everyone suffers, everyone undergoes tremendous amounts of difficulty, and everyone is forced to accept the idea of death, which is both foreign and not true to the living entity's existence. That which is never born never, is never die. So the, the, the jivas are eternal. Although we are small, minute, still we are eternal. But we, we identify with the temporary and there, or the external energy, and therefore we come under the illusion that we are of the same nature. And therefore we live in a, a false sense of existence. And in that false sense of existence, we make plans to become happy by arranging the material energy in so many different ways. That arrangement is based on the living entity's desire to enjoy, which is intrinsic to the living entity's existence. Because that enjoyment cannot be found in, in energy that is opposite of its own nature, therefore there is a hard struggle. It's like if you mix oil and water together, they will mix just for when you put them together. But that mixture is never complete. And at due course of time, because of their natural uh, um, atomic structure, the mixture becomes you know, separate again. The oil will separate from the water. So in the same way, we live in um, this false world of material existence because it has nothing to do with our real identity. Our real identity is spiritual. And we are meant to live in the spiritual world with the Supreme Lord. But due to this desire for supremacy of the living entity, because the, the, the Supreme Lord is the supreme enjoyer, and the living entities also have that desire to enjoy. The Supreme Lord is Swarat, which means he's completely and fully independent. Because we are part of that same energy, we are also Swarat in a minute element of Swarat. We have independence, but that independence is to choose between the material and the spiritual. And therefore, very few of the total amount of living entities choose the external or the material energy to try to act out their desire for enjoyment. And because of that, this is the material world is created to facilitate the living entity's enjoyment, but at the same time to frustrate that enjoyment through the uh, through the three modes of material energy. And so no one can really find any lasting or even temporary happiness may also be there, but it's just a relief from suffering. It's like if you are hungry, that is a form of suffering. And you eat when the, the hunger goes away. So what did you do? You counteracted the, the pain of hunger. Or you might use the example when you're... When you're uh, he gets sick, you're outside of your normal constitutional position as being healthy. You return to health, you're back to your norm. So the healthy state is the norm state. 
not eating. The sixth state is uh, what when we go away from Krishna and create our own desire to be separate from Krishna and try to enjoy it separately from Krishna, the material world is immediately there to facilitate that desire. And so um, the whole the whole idea is to uh, Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, Gola Chandra Bole, Kota Nidra, Jayamaya, Pisa Chita. Jeev Jago means wake up. <laughs> wake up from this illusion that you are this material body and that you could be happy in the material world and find your real happiness where it actually exists. If you're in a desert and you're thirsty, you're looking for water, but there's no water in the desert. Due to the desire to have water, a, ma a mirage comes up. An imaginary lake appears in the, in the desert. It has nothing to do with the desert, nor does it exist. But because of the strong desire for water, the imagination projects this desire into an illusion. When we sit there and we go for that mirage, and then we find it's only more hot burning sand. Well, in the same way, the living entity is, is chasing after this, this happiness in this material world through various programs and desires to find peace and happiness. But it can never do that because it's just... So getting, getting back to our constitutional position is actually the purpose of the material energy because it's there for two purposes, to facilitate uh, our desire to enjoy separately and to frustrate that desire at the same time so we actually get back to our real constitutional position. Not our conditioned nature, but our constitutional nature. <clears throat> and that is to take up devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which is the internal energy of the Lord manifested in the form of, of a the science of the soul's relationship with the supreme soul krishna or any of the eternal manifestations of krishna's personal forms such as ram chaitanya or chaitanya or any of the lila incarnations of the lord there are also you know, personal manifestations of the lord that appear at a certain time. But our relationship ultimately is with the Supreme Lord, either in the Vaikuntha planets, where we worship the Lord in the mood of awe and reverence, or in the realm of Goloka Vrindavan, where worship of the Lord takes on the mood of uh, equality with or superiority to the Lord in that loving relationship. So these two realms of existence, which are way beyond this material world, one cannot measure any distance between the material world and the spiritual world. There is no measurement. Um, they give some measurement of how big the material universes are. And it's ultimately trillions and trillions and trillions of miles that cannot be calculated simply by any kind of instrument that we have. But beyond that, beyond the coverings of all the material energy, there is the uh, void between the material and the spiritual, which is an element of darkness. And beyond that element of darkness, there is an existence of eternal light, which is, is coming from the body of the Supreme Lord. It's not provided by any kind of artificial light, such as sun or moon or electricity or anything like that. That light is simply the body of the Supreme Lord, which lights up the entire spiritual world. And in that light, there is ecstasy of the happiness that one experiences in that realm of transcendental existence. For those who are actually intelligent and know their best interests in life, as it says, Tasyaivo hetu pratite nakovida, the 
those who are actually intelligent and philosophically inclined do not desire, do not try for any position anywhere, going all the way up from the lowest planet in the material universes to the highest planet where Lord Brahma exists. And so what is there? Their goal is the eternal realm of existence. And that can be facilitated easily through the process of pure devotional service as given by the spiritual master through the instructions he gives based on the words of Krishna coming through the revealed scriptures. So it's a very wonderful process. If we waste time in this material world trying to adjust the material energy to make it work so we can find some temporary happiness, we'll lose the opportunity to uh, gain eternal life. Uh, once you gain eternal life, then you understand everything and you don't need anything else. So the idea is to again gain eternal life. And therefore, it says in the Srimad Bhagavatam mm -hmm. that by the rising and the setting of the sun, another day is lost and one is closer to death. Except, and it goes on to use the word, except for those who use their time to hear about the all good personality of Godhead. So hearing about the Supreme Lord, his pastimes, both in the material and spiritual realm, and engaging in practical activities of service to the Supreme Lord under the guidance of the of the Lord's um, deputed representative, the bona fide spiritual master, who is uh, qualified to bring the souls back to Krishna because of his pure devotion to Krishna. And that the, the process is very easy, very simple. What makes the process hard is that we're still looking towards the material energy for some kind of happiness, some kind of satisfaction, something. Now, if we look towards the spiritual for everything we need in life, then that spiritual will consume our consciousness where we will see that Krishna is providing everything we need to live nicely in this world and ultimately Taktwa Deham Purna Jan money. 19 no maybe surge, you know, one can go back to the spiritual world. And if we fail to make it in this life, then we have to come back in the next life and again leave off from where we begin, where we leave off from our efforts in this particular life. The danger of that is that one can again fall back into the material energy by accepting another life. So therefore, one should finish up in this life and not waste time and try to think, well, you know, it's too hard in this life. Maybe if I get a better situation in the next life. No, there's no such thing as better situation. Because you can, once you leave this body, karma, dive in the training, you're under the influence of the material energy. You cannot dictate where you're going to go or what body you're going to have what capacity you're going to be able to use in the body you have for self-realization. All of that is given to you through the external energy by Krishna's arrangement. So, um, therefore, Srila Prabhupada would say, whatever has blocked you from making, from reaching perfection in this life will be there again to block you in the next life also. So better to do it now and then postpone it. Uh, a devotee who is uh, serious about their own best interests will uh, take up devotional service in a serious way. And that means they understand that spiritual life is actually life. Material life is a shadow of life that looks like life, just like a shadow looks like the image of the person, but it's not the person, nor can it act like the person. So the, the material world may look similar to things in the spiritual world, but because the, the substance is different, it's a shadow of the reality and cannot give you. It's like if you look into a mirror and you're eating while you're looking into the mirror, you might see food in the mirror also. 
and you'll see somebody eating, of course, that's you. And you think, well, let me eat that food that's in the mirror. But that's just a reflection of the reality. There's no food there, nor is there any enjoyment in that reflection. So in that, in, in our struggle to find happiness, we are more in, in tune with the reflection of the reality than the reality. <clears throat> now, sometimes we think the reality is so far removed from our experience that it becomes so difficult. That's not really that difficult. What's difficult is our attachments to the material world. To uproot those, and we simply have to take and take it take the serious the process of devotional service. And that means the essence of devotional service is to chant the holy names of the Lord regularly on these without fail in a mood of calling out to Krishna to pick us up. O son of Maharaj Nanda Krishna, I am your eternal servant. Somehow or other I fall into this ocean of birth and death. And then the petition, please pick me up from this ocean of death and place me as one of the atoms at your lotus feet. And that prayer is, is, is the, the calling of the heart to the Lord for his shelter. Once we get the shelter of the Lord through the chanting of the holy name, associating with devotees who are engaged in devotional service, reading, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Nectar of Devotion, these are the four books that are the main books for the Vaishnavas. Uh, then everything becomes nice and easy and as the as the as Bhagavad Gita says, susukam kartam avyayan, that this process is simply joyful. Uh, what makes the joyfulness is just like if somebody gives you some sweet rice, which is very nice, rice nicely cooked in milk with various types of sweeteners, and may also be some raisins in there, very nice. You think, well, I think I'll add some sand to the sweet rice. You throw some sand in there. And then you try to enjoy it, and then you realize it's, there's no enjoyment there. It's rather than the sweet, ambrosial taste of the sweet rice, you get this crunchy, gritty taste that comes with the sand, and it overshadows the happiness you can get from that in the sweet rice. So in the same way, we're mixing this material energy into our life. And we're thinking, well, you know, a little mixture here and there is, you know, is all right. It's not because you know, you're just adding sweet sand to the sweet rice. So how do we get over that? And by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, chant and uh, associating with and serving, serving Vaishnava. Process is nectar. Our Chaitanya is... Namo Maha Vandanaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya. And I'm going to go to the Maha. He is so merciful that anyone and everyone, no matter what your background is, what is your, what your culture is, what is your capacity, what is your intelligence, nothing material is the consideration for practicing Krishna consciousness or receiving the full mercy of the Lord. As it says in the second canto of Bhagavatam, Kiratu Hunam Palinda Pukasa Sambira Samba Hasyadaya Yene Chapapa Upasraya Sraya Sudanti Prabhavishnave Namaha. Beautiful verse. It lists all of these races Kirata, Hunam, Palinda, Pukasa, Ambira, Samba. Kashyada. These are ra races that are considered subhuman, even below the Varnashram system, way below. Even if they take the devotional service, they can also reach perfection. So that's Mahatma's mercy. He doesn't exclude anyone. We have the story of Jagai and Madai who are so sinful 
But even the Amorites could not count full of their sins. And uh, he was going, he was beyond himself in madness, trying to keep up with the sinful records of uh, Jagai and Mother. But everything was turned around by the mercy of Lord Nityananda, who gave them a chance to rectify themselves. And somehow or other, although at first they didn't, by the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they changed and became actually devotees of the Lord. When Yamaraj realized what had happened, he was dancing in ecstasy. When Narada Muni was realized what happened, he was dancing in ecstasy and he lost his vina. He couldn't even find his vina. Uh, so Lord Shiva was so happy that he was dancing naked and he didn't even realize it. So yeah, the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is uh, unfathomable, it cannot be calculated. Bhila Prabhupada would pose a question. He said, if you have great intelligence, great abilities, learning, you could capacity, you're able to accomplish so many things, then apply your abilities to try to understand Lord Chaitanya's mercy. And you will never be able to do that. <laughs> it's not possible. It's uh, inconceivable. And that mercy is still today as the Jagais and Madais in the modern day society are now somehow or other coming to the process of pure devotional service and becoming uh, Vaishnavas, those who serve the Lord and are kind and compassionate to all other living entities. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy. So if we take it up seriously, um, and seriously means whatever you when you're doing something in life, you should be serious about what you're doing. If you're going to school to get a diploma, if you're making plans to uh, go somewhere on a, a long journey, whatever you're doing, if you're trying to write a, a your dissertation, whatever you're doing, you should be doing it fully with complete attention and absorption. In the same way, that is what a what spiritual life is like. It requires that type of commitment in order to get the mercy. Because otherwise, the material energy will still dance. It's shadow dance in front of our minds and, and life. And this try to attract us away from this, uh, this great fortune that is, uh, that is there at our fingertips. But... Material energy stays behind the Lord. She, in one sense, is a little embarrassed about her service to delude the living entities away from the Lord. So she cannot go in front of the Lord. She stays behind the Lord. Therefore, if you keep the Lord in front, you cannot, you won't be influenced by the material energy. So keeping Krishna foremost means to keep Maya in the backside or away. And if we don't keep Krishna foremost, and that means not just whenever we want to, but always, then uh, Maya will perform her dance of attraction. And uh, she is very expert at luring the conditioned souls to accept her activities as being uh, sources of happiness. But if we stay close to the holy name, chant and associate with devotees, and read the books, and uh, offer our food in sacrifice to the Lord, and use our time to serve the Lord, and then um, it's guaranteed that we will make it back to the spiritual world. The time of death, because of we have used our life for absorption in the Lord, and then it'll become easy to remember Krishna at the time of death. Otherwise, if we don't use our life, then when it comes to the time of death, it becomes very difficult to remember Krishna. We will remember those things in our life that were more important than Krishna. And then it will force us to take another verse. And so, uh, the time of death is the, uh, is the final exam of the of the activities that we have performed in our life. And 
Therefore, we should prepare to go back home, back to Godhead. And that was what, that was, that's what Krishna, that's what makes Krishna happy. He's on, Krishna is always, he's, uh, he's Atmarama, he's self-contained, he needs nothing outside of himself. And he is uh, Satchitananda, he's always, he's full of knowledge and bliss, always. But as a kind, loving uh, father, because he is a humbijat to Dampita, he created all living entities. So in the Bhagavad Gita, it says he's the father of all living entities. And therefore, a father has natural love for his children. And therefore, because of his natural love, he is, feels unhappy that we have to suffer in this material world. So if we want to make Krishna happy, we will go back to him in devotion in the spiritual world and stop wasting time trying to pick through the garbage of this material world. <laughs> like, a, like a chicken who runs to a dustbin looking for some uh, small kernels of, of corn so they can find something to eat. And so this material world is like a garbage dump. Um, Prabhupada was in Mexico City one time. And they were walking along and there was a big gigantic garbage container and it was written in Spanish on the outside. So uh, uh, Prabhupada asked the devotees who were with him who were Spanish devotees he said, what does that say? It says here, it says he said, uh, put your trash here. Papa said, yes, we should put the whole material world right there. And he made the point <laughs> That for one who is in knowledge, this material world is just like a garbage dump. <laughs> of course, in the trash dump, once in a while you'll find something good, but still, most of it is all trash. And that good thing only creates the illusion that there's more good things, which causes you to rummage through the garbage even more. <laughs> So uh, we can stop rummaging in the garbage by taking the process of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very seriously, chant the holy names of the Lord, and to offer our food, associate with devotees, go to the temple, see the deities, offer some service if you can, and uh, uh, read Srimad Bhagavatam Bhagavad Gita, go on pilgrimages to holy places. It's like now we are two months away from the Gorpurnima festival where thousands of devotees from all around the world will descend upon Gaur uh, Mayapur for to celebrate the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Sri Srila Prabhupada uh, in his statements about Gorpurnima festival, he said every devotee in our movement should come to the Gorpurnima festival each year for at least eight days. Take part in this wonderful festival. Mayapur Dham is the spiritual world. It's not part of the material world. Uh, uh, Prabhupada even said some interesting things about Mayapur Dham. He said the sun in Mayapur is not the same sun you see outside of Mayapur. It's a different sun. <laughs> it's, this, it's a transcendental sun that appears in Mayapur. It looks like the regular sun, but because it's the Dham, it's 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 giving us the spiritual sun. Uh, these are many, many other things that Prabhupada said about the Dham. The Dham is not part of the material world. And uh, we can actually experience great happiness and transcendental knowledge by living in the Dham or taking part of the activities of the Dham. And this is one of the processes of bhakti. It's called uh, serving the lotus feet. That means going to holy places of pilgrimage and uh, associating with sick, saintly persons and taking sufficient time to hear and chant the glories of the Lord in the association of others. So this is our process. It's a whole life in itself. It's not marginal. Sometimes we think, you know, life is what we do in a material world. 
And spiritual life is there, yeah, it's just, you know, part of life, but it's not, it's actually life. The material world is a shadow of the actual reality of existence. And as it says in this verse, this external potency manifests as this material world in order to facilitate the desire of the living entity to enjoy separately from the Lord. There's no other purpose from this material world is to give that chance for the living entity to try to fulfill this awkward desire, unnatural desire. And uh, because it cannot fulfill it, therefore one suffers and struggles and ultimately has to leave the world and again take birth again in some, another species of life in Gurna. Mayadavase, Kacho Base, Kacho Habububai. And life after life we transfer. Kardanam Guna Sango, so Sarasad Joni Jamasu. From the highest planet to the material world down to the lowest, all our places of misery, wherein repeated birth and death take place. And Krishna says, one who attains to my abode does not again enter into this realm of uh, the realm of suffering, referring to this material world. So this is the purpose of life, is to get out of this place and go back Guru Krishna in this different children. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the wonderful class. And thank you so much for the beautiful stories all the time. Thank you for always reminding us that this is a shadow life. This is not a real life. We know and we constantly forget. Thank you so much for reminding that we are still getting his, um, um, you know, Mahaprabhu's constant, uh, constant mercies with us. But this is a new thing I learned today that um, Prabhupada said that the sun at Mayapur is the spiritual sun. So that's fantastic. Maybe we should go there. He said, well, he said, it's not the same sun you see outside of Mayapur. That's how he, he phrased it. it. Has its own son. <laughs> I'm here in Mayapur right now, and when I see the sunrise every morning, it's like wow, <laughs> this beautiful, bright orange ball that just sits in the sky as it's rising above the horizon. So you know, it's mm -hmm. it's just a, it's a it's a it's a it's a darshan in and of itself, just looking at the sun as, as it comes up over the horizon. Very nice. I, I that's very nice. It's probably our mindset that makes it makes us look at it that that way. So nice. Thank you so much for sharing all the stories, Maharaj. Um, devotees, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to unmute yourself, ask the question, or Please raise your hand and go ahead. I do see Mayank Gupta Prabhuji. Uh, you may go ahead and ask your question. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dindu Pranams. Maharaj, uh, in the class you said that uh, Maya has two purposes, to facilitate the Jiva to uh, go back to Godhead. And uh, another purpose is? It is to uh, keep the, the living entity here attracted to the illusion. She tries, yes, to keep you, you know, she tries to keep you attracted to the illusion but at the same time she's kicking you and that kicking is the waking up process that you, you know this illusion that you're being attracted to is not really the purpose of life the purpose is to get out of the kicking process and go back to the, the, the loving process in the spiritual world so the material world facilitates the living entity's desire to enjoy here, but at the same time, it frustrates that same desire so the living entity doesn't try to stay here. Maharaj, then uh, why Maya sometimes picks sincere devotees also? Because they also get educated sometimes. I didn't hear the question. Why does Maya what? Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, why does then Maya sometimes agitate sincere devotees of also? Because sometimes they also get agitated. 
Well, unless you're a pure devotee, you can also again be attracted by men. Pure devotees never get attracted by men. So sincere devotee is one who is coming to the process of purification. They're, they're, they're absorbed in the process. Usually they're protected by Krishna. Very rarely do they get, uh, do, they, do they fall down. But sometimes it does happen due to a little inattention in their execution of devotional service. You have the example of, uh, of uh, Ajamel. Ajamel was a great soul. He had performed devotional activities his whole life. But somehow by walking along the street, as is explained in the sixth canto of Bhagavatam, he saw a sudra and a sudrani in a very compromising position. His mind somehow or other got attracted to that. And then that changed his whole conception of life. And then that sudrani became his focus and chased after her. She was a prostitute and he married her. So that little deviation in his, uh, obviously he wasn't a pure devotee because pure devotees don't fall down. But uh, he's, he was still fixed in devotional service. He, had, he wasn't on the highest platform of devotion. So one can fall down. One can fall down if they are haven't reached pure devotional service. But if we keep pure desire, that is, follow very strictly the instructions of the spiritual master and understand the difference between what is material and what is spiritual, act in that way, we will be protected by Krishna and safe from any type of fall down. Your sincerity will uh, keep you afloat. But you have to reach purity. Otherwise, if you're not pure, ultimately you can't go back to Godhead. And purity is, is not so hard. It just has to be, it's something that comes by continuation. It's like if you plant a seed in the ground, you don't have to plant simply by planting the seed. The watering process has to be there, cultivating of the ground around it and preventing the weeds from growing up and also fencing off the, the plant so it's not destroyed from the external, uh, external environment. So in the same way, when we plant the seed of bhakti given to us by the spiritual master, then we have to carefully execute it. And the watering process is hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And those things we have to avoid. Yuba Goswami describes them in their instructions. And uh, the thing that can will easily destroy our bhakti is, is intimate association with non-devotees. Because the, the whole value system is different. Their, their, their goal in life is opposite the devotees. If we take that kind of intimate association, then we'll become polluted by that. And, and then our value system will change. And we'll, sit, we'll start to think that the material world is okay. So stay in association with devotees and you're generally protected from all of these uh, uh, attacks of Maya. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. thank you, thank you, Prabhuji, for your good question. And thank you, Maharaj, for your wonderful answer. Thank you so much. Devotees, if you have any question, go ahead, please. So Maharaj, I have a question, if you, if I may. So this is out of a personal question. So when we chant, I've noticed if I chant very clearly, things are falling into its place. But sometimes when the chanting is not that good, um, some external turbulences come and immediately the mind gets agitated. So, so Maya comes into probably tries to test you more when you are like very very serious yeah she's testing you 
He tests yeah. you all the way up until you become a clear devotee. Right. And then she offers her obeisances at that point. Mm. Because that's her job. To yeah. see where you're weak and to test you there so you become aware of where you're weak. And then you strengthen that particular area of your, of your devotional practice. Maya knows your weaknesses. <laughs> and she'll go through that. Yes, Maharaj, thank you. So I have Radha Jyoti Mataji. She is saying that um, she is apologizing. She was not able to attend your class. And she's requesting if you would be kind enough to give her some punishment. Uh, okay, the punishment is distribute uh, uh, 10 Bhagavad Gita's this month in the month of January. There you go, Jyoti Mataji. <laughs> Wonderful punishment. Yes, I'll do it, Maharajji. Maharajji, my question to you is, uh, material world is so subtle. So Maya is very subtle, subtler than the material world. And we are jivas. Uh, we are hanging around somewhere, trying to do bhakti. Then how will cross the ocean of this material world? Sometimes it's easy when the devotees are around or some mercy is coming but when crisis comes testing starts it it seems very difficult so could you please teach on me take shelter of the holy name take shelter of Srimad Bhagavatam these are these are objects that give our consciousness shelter yeah the holy name and Bhagavatam are always available and they give the mind the shelter. Just when you feel like that, just, just pick up the Bhagavatam and read. Or sit down and start chanting. Right. Thank you, Maharaj. Hemi Mataji, you have a question, Mata? You have to create your own uh, environment sometimes when the environment is not there. And that means you direct your consciousness towards something spiritual. The mind is always trying to find something in this material world that will give us some satisfaction. And we have to learn how to ignore that restless mind and direct it towards the spiritual activity. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, Hemi Mataji, would you like to go ahead with your yeah. question? Also? Yeah, thank you, Mataji. Dhanwat Pranam. Dhanwat Pranam, Maharaj, beautiful class. Uh, I just uh, have this question that um, oftentimes I notice that when I am, you know, say, reading something uh, which is more mundane or say watching my phone, my absorption is like so, so very deep. And uh, then I'm Comparing that to when I'm trying to chant, it's it's not the same, like uh, the distraction or all those thoughts coming in the mind. So why the two absorptions are different? Is it my conditioning or is it the maya? Uh, what? Why is these two things different? Well, you're saying when you read mundane things, you get absorbed? Is that, is that what you must say? Yes, the, often uh, some if I'm watching some kind of phone uh, or uh, you know even reading something which is uh, may not really be spiritual, the absorption is very deep. Uh, and then when you sit down to chant, that that depth is not there. So it exists. I mean, I, obviously, I can be very absorbed in a certain activity and not as much in my chanting, even though I have a desire to chant. Uh, so. Why is it different? Well, first of all, if you take shelter of mundane for uh, a mundane material literature or any 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 
topic that's mundane, you're weakening your ability to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And your mind is, again, becoming uh, uh, in the mood of fruit of activities, which is the mood of passion. And so when you chant, it's going to be more difficult. So if you, now the tendency is because of our conditioning, we may like these things, and Maya presents them in a way that is interesting, fascinating. The whole material world is designed to attract the conditioned soul to do something that will facilitate some kind of enjoyment, either visual, audio, audio, audio through sound, through sight, through touch. And so the expert Materialists design various types of programs to attract others for some profit. Well, this is the material world. It's called the world of names. The world of names. What are, what are material subjects? Names only. There's no... There's no meaning to these names. It's just names that they give. Okay. They all names. So if you like, if you like adventure, read the Mahabharata. If you like love stories, read the Mahabharata. If you like fighting, read, uh, read Ramayana. <laughs> if you like, uh, you know, interesting philosophy, read Srimad Bhagavatam. So these are uh, these transcendental literatures also have elements of the of these uh, things that we that attract us in this material world also. But the these these same topics are not of the same characteristic, although the forms are the same. The results are different. The mind becomes more agitated, more uh, harder to control when we delve, delve in material topics. And then we delve in spiritual topics, the mind becomes more satisfied and more peaceful. But because we're not practiced for spiritual life, the initial contact with material spiritual activities seems to become less absorbing or a little bit more difficult, that's just due to our condition. Just, just stay with it. That's all. It'll, it'll pass. And you'll start getting, you'll find happiness and you'll look forward to spiritual activity. Very nice, Maharaj. How wonderful answer. Yeah, it will pass. There you go, Hemi Mataji. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Dandrat Pranam. Nice to go, Hemi. Nice to hear you. Thank you. I hope. Thank you. Uh, how's mother doing? Mm -hmm. uh, Ma Maharaj, I I am not sure if you're mixing me with somebody else. Uh, I think so. I know another Hemi. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Maharaj. Dandrat Pranam. Whatever invokes your blessings, Maharaj, for all the devotees, even if it's out of confusion, <laughs> we will all take it. Ragini Mataji, you have a question, Mata, for Maharaj? Uh, Hare Krishna, please accept my obeisances. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. Um, actually, uh, I have no idea about these classes. I just simply joined in and I just got to know that Maharaj is here in the class and kind of just got finished. Uh, but I kind of figured out you gave a class on Maya. Uh, so I have a question. Um, so like I'm facing, I'm a college going student, but I'm facing many obstacles on the path of bhakti. There's so many things I cannot do. Neither am I able to associate with devotees or go to the temple. And I have to eat the food that's cooked by my family members who are non-devotees and eat it. So. What do I think about the situation? Can I think like, oh, it's a phase; it will go away, or uh, can should I like what 
can I consider this as is it my praradha or is it some way of Krishna's mercy or something? How do I consider the situation and keep myself strong on this path? <laughs> well, these are all practical things. If you're going in the opposite direction, you have to change direction. <laughs> um, when it comes to food, don't accept food cooked by people who are not devotees because that pollutes the mind, even if they're family members. So cook your own food. <laughs> that would be a good start. You could start cooking your own food, and then you find everything else will start to become easier. Actually, that's just not a small thing because consciousness goes into the food. Uh, as far as getting association, well, it, it may be time consuming about the lifestyle you chose. You know. we just have to take some time aside from that and go for a sudden association. When you're in the midst of all of your responsibilities, take a break every once in a while and go to the temple if you can. If you can't, call up a devotee and start speaking to the devotees, spend some time. We got this regular class here. This is this is not just a, a Thursday class, it's an everyday class. Come on to class every day. This class is so so uh, popular, it's been on for uh, now uh, 15 years. This is the 15th year this this uh, class has been going on steadily every day. <laughs> So yeah, you have it. You have a choice. You can go for the material. Or you can go for the spiritual. Go for the value. Mm, yes, Maharaj. Thank you. But like uh, regarding the food, yes, I even heard in uh, classes that yeah, consciousness is what gets mixed in the food. And um, but the thing is that if I kind of start cooking and all of that, then it creates like a ruckus at home. And uh, that's why uh, I don't want to get things complicated. So what can I do in this phase, like in during the, this time? Yeah, you just, uh, just make sandwiches. <laughs> the point is, you know, Krishna consciousness, you can't compromise the principles of Krishna consciousness just because the material situation is not conducive. You have to make the material situation conducive to the practice of Krishna consciousness. You say you're going to cause a ruckus. Well, then your mind will be a ruckus because you're eating that food. That's <laughs> like the system of things. You can't say, well, you can't say, you know, um, I don't want to get sick, but I'll go outside in the freezing cold without any, without any proper clothes on. But I don't want to get sick. You're just putting yourself in a situation to get sick. Same way. If you accept these all of these material things, then your consciousness, spiritual consciousness, is going to be uh, stunted. It's going to be stymied. It's going to be somewhat buried. You know, Krishna consciousness is practical. It's not. It's not some mind. It's something in the mind. It's practical. It becomes in the mind when you practice properly. So take take sufficient time out to chant and chant as much as you can. That will help you a lot. Yes. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, uh, following on Ragini Mataji's question. I mean, you know, here the kids have to go, for example, to college. They have to live in dorm. And really cooking food might not be an option for them. Is it possible, Maharaj? Um that they offer whatever is cooked by others, they offer it to Krishna in their heart or chant and then consume the food. Is that that possibility or is that's a compromise big time? You can't, you can't offer food cooked by non-devotees to Krishna. You won't accept it. Oh, yeah. there you go. Ragini Mataji. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I, I, have, I have one disciple. She was, she's a mother, and she, her daughter wants to eat meat and all that. So she was cooking for it. 
He wasn't eating, but she was cooking for her daughter. And she was getting disturbed because of it. And I just told her, hey, forget about it. Stop cooking for your daughter and let your daughter worry about her own food. And she did. And after some time, the daughter actually started to give up eating the wrong food. It can be beneficial for both people. So just, just say, you know, hey, I'm not going to eat that stuff. I'm going to eat only things cooked by the by someone who's practicing spiritual life. Food is a very, you know, you get you get dreams based on the food you eat. Sometimes those dreams are horrible. <laughs> Especially if they're grains. Grains are a medium for consciousness more than anything. Prabhupada writes it in the in the Bhagavatam, in the Chaitanya Charmita, do not eat food cooked by non devotees, especially grains. It's a principle. It's not a it's not a, a detail. It is a principle. <laughs> I fly on planes. I never eat any of the food on the plane. Once in a while, I'll ask for some fruit or maybe a glass of juice. But I, I never eat any cooked foods. I travel. I've been traveling for the last 40 years. I don't eat outside at all. And sometimes I, I have to bring my own food or have somebody prepare it and carry it. We're just we're just making a spiritual life very difficult. Take like food by non devotees. Right. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Scarlet Mataji, you had a question for His Holiness? Yes, please. Hare Krishna, thank you very, very much for today. Um we are talking about the material uh, life and the spiritual life and Maya who uh, who controls the material life and so on. May I ask how long, how much do Maya get to to control? How is that? Is there any limit that uh, Maya shouldn't go? beyond that limit or he she could do however how long ever to to control us Prabhupada would say Maya is as strong as you are weak the stronger you are spiritually the weaker Maya is upon you if you're weak spiritually Maya is strong And you'll see when people do the most hellish things in the material world, they create pure health. And these are all the dance of the illusionary energy. You see the different deities you would like. There is a riding on a tiger and see it's a trident. And these are the tridents of the and it's three modes of material energy, and she's stabbing the living entity with these three modes. It means a different suffering. Then you have, and if you have Durga, who comes all the way as Bhadra Kali. Bhadra Kali has 16 points, and she has weapons in each one of those points. And she's smashing the energy and destroying the living entity. Those who are very sinful are getting such severe reactions. It's mentioned in the 16th chapter of the Bhagavata. They don't see the light of day for thousands of births. Krishna says, I cast them into demoniac species, life after life after life. <laughs> so you can stay in hell for practically forever if you want. <laughs> Or you can get out of it. So, um, 
when there's not a trace of light anywhere, then everything is completely dark. And that's that's the extent of minus. You can go through complete darkness. There's not a glimmer of light anywhere. Or you can have darkness with some twinkle of light in the distance. But it's still darkness, but it's not complete. So Maya can cover the living entity so deep that the living entity can't understand anything about who they are or what is the purpose of life. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, before we take any further questions, I wanted to ask you how you feel, because um, you have given you've been given this class for, and it's more than an hour. Is it okay to take more questions? Yeah. Okay. Sri Devi Mathit. Yes. This is what I look forward to discussing. Wonderful. It's the conscious philosophy. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you uh, for a wonderful, wonderful class, Guru Maharaj. I want to piggyback back on those questions about accepting food um, from people who are not practicing Krishna consciousness. So what if they claim they're also spiritual, they're also following a spiritual path it's just not krishna consciousness but that doesn't mean we are not spiritual so why don't you accept food from us so then it's almost like we are claiming krishna consciousness is the supermost or the best and what you're practicing is inferior so i won't accept your food and they might get offended so how to how to maintain our strictness without offending them? Well, you can use a little finesse in that case and, and find reasons not to accept it. But you don't try to give them a philosophical instructions based on different levels of spirituality. It's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> I only visit them on Ekadashi, Guru Maharaj, and say, I cannot eat anything except fruit. <laughs> so then, yeah, just say, today is Ekadashi, and I don't eat grains on this today. Use a little finesse in dealing with people, and so you don't offend people, but at the same time, don't compromise your, your values. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Wonderful devotees. Any last minute questions? Yes, uh, Manjri Madhaji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shri Prabhupada and Shri Guru and Shri Gauranga. Wonderful lecture, uh, Maharaj, as always, and wonderful discussions. Um, one of the questions that I have just uh, prompted from, from the discussions of the food. Um, so what about, I, I've heard the consciousness goes into the food by the um, medium of Agni or, or the flame, right? Um, so what about these other foods that are like, you know, like chips or ready-made food that doesn't have onion, garlic or eggs or anything? Um, so in, in those instances, um, are we allowed to eat those foods or we shouldn't, we should avoid those foods as well? Like even sandwiches when there's no eggs or something. Um, are, are, is that all allowed or not allowed? Yeah, just take Prashad and make it easy. <laughs> Why do I get into all this complicated stuff? Uh, certain foods are pre-prepared and then therefore they're pre-cooked and then preserved for later. Well, that means in one sense they're also cooked. Ah, Prabhupada well, didn't get into all these big deals. Yeah, prashadam is so nice, you know. <laughs> we have such a variety of prashadam. You can't beat prashadam in taste and in satisfaction. 
you'll see devotees. They always look forward to taking prasadam. You see, karmis many times they just eat because they have to, so they can run and do their job in the office. Mm. <laughs> they don't even enjoy their food; they just do it sometimes. Always, devotees always find great happiness in eating prasad. Ek dina shanti pore. Sadira, Vidya Jam, Jau Tendriya Chahe Kaam, Jeeve Kirindi Saya Sagare, Dharma Jai Jeevayati, Logo Maya Sadurmati, Kage Jeta Kutina Samsare, Krishna Vakta Daya Mai, Kari Var Jeeva Joy, Shwa Prasad Dilo Vai, Sayana Mrita Pao, Radha Krishna Guna Gao, Remira Kod, Saitanya Nitai, Jaini Mai, Jaini Tai. That's part two of the same Prashadam song. At the house of uh, Advaita Charya, the great festival of and the devotees are in relishing Bhagavad Prashad. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Yeah, Prashadam is great. You can have fun. Get yourself some cookbooks and just go for it. <laughs> so I guess... Up. Yeah, there's so many nice preparations you can cook. Our, our one of Srila Prabhupada's dearest devotees, Jamuna, she wrote this cookbook called, what is it called? What was it called? Krishna? Krishna higher, cuisine? Higher taste? What was it? Krishna cuisine? Or something like that. Krishna cuisine. Krishna cuisine. Yeah, and she actually won an award in the cookbook competition for her presentation. Mm -hmm. And if you could do half the if you could do half the the recipes in your lifetime in that book, then you would be doing a lot. <laughs> The book's so big, and it's like thousands of recipes. Yeah, thank you, Tiffany Mataji. She wrote the right answer. Lord Krishna's Cuisine. Yes, that, that's exactly the name. Shukhagara Prabhuji, you had a question for His Holiness? Maharaj, this Dhruva Loka, is it coming in the spiritual world or material world? Is it a, it is equal to Vaikuntha or it is No, it's a it's a it's a spiritual planet in the material world. It's also People who go to Dhruvalok also will not come back or that is again fallable no, place where it Jugaloka there's on on Jugaloka there's an island called Swaitatui where the Lord Shirodakshai Vishnu resides. Ah. The Lord resides on in Jugaloka. In the island of Swaitatui, which is part of Jugaloka. It's the highest planet in the material world. It's not a destination planet. That I know. Oh. One can attain Dhruva Loka also, but I guess that would be considered to be a stage where in the next life one would go back to the spiritual world from there. Oh. It doesn't talk so much about Dhruva Loka as being the place where one attains by the practice of devotional service. When the Lord wants to come to the material world, through a different incarnation, he comes through the feature of Shiradakshai Vishnu. Shiradakshai mm -hmm. is the gateway for the incarnations to appear in the material world. Mm -hmm. uh, Maharaj, if somebody somebody has uh, uh, removed all his, uh, you know, uh, the palm, clothes, molo, madamas, everything is removed. Uh, when he's going back home, back to bed, Godhead, is it that he has to go 
one life in a Bhauma Vrindavan where Krishna is, you know, now incarnated somewhere where he has to live with Krishna and understand and then only he will be taken back home, back to Godhead. Well, it's generally the case. It takes you two lives to get back to God in general. Even if you get very elevated in this life, you go to a planet where Krishna is performing his pastimes somewhere in the universe, in, the, in one of the material universes. But then after the guarantee, the next life. Um, it seems, yeah, that's what it's mentioned. Because if the free will is there, I'm just asking that whether from that also people may come back to the material world or they will be always purified and they will never do anything. Um, generally, after being in the material world, one no longer and one gets out of the material world in the in the realm of higher relationships where they're with Krishna in the in the material world, assisting mm. him, taking part in his pastimes. Now, it doesn't mean you can't fall back down, but it's unlikely you would. <laughs> but if you and, uh, to, it, it, if you go to is it that if you go to Swargaloka? The heavenly planets, then when your, ah. pious credit, when your pious credits are finished, then Shinya Pudnya Marcha come back. And then just like you're driving in your car and you run out of gas, you know, everything stops. And so, same way, you, when your pious activities run out, you fall back to the material world <laughs> to start again from where you were before. Sometimes it says you even fall farther down when you fall back from the heavenly planets. You go lower than what you were before you achieved the heavenly planets. <clears throat> and uh, Maharaj, when we all have come from the spiritual world to the material world, means first time they all, Krishna sends us to the Brahma Loka, and from there, by doing more and more sinful activity, they come down and down, and then come to the animal planet. This is also, I wanted your. Clarification, Maharaj. I didn't catch that question. I mean, I'm... No, when uh, see why we have come down to the material world because misuse of free will and we were envious of Krishna and we have fell down. But first time Krishna doesn't send you as an animal, he will send you to the Brahma Loka, which is the highest planet in the material world. But uh, after coming here, the three modes and all this will keep down and down and down. Then we come down to the Patal Loka, up and down. So, uh, that means all of us were in spiritual world and because of misuse of free will, we have come down. But now yeah. once we go back, we will not come back. Is it, is it true? My understanding. Just wanted to reconfirm with you. Man. We confirm whether you, you will come back or not. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, have your, you, you still have your choice, but it's like... You, you're, so you stick your hand in the fire and then you get burnt and then you, you, your hand gets cured and now your hands are well again and then you see the fire <laughs> you're not going to stick your hand in the fire again. So, yeah, it's it's common sense that once you return to the spiritual world, you mm. won't want to go back here. You understand what it means to come back here means to suffer, to be, to be separate from Krishna. The real supper, the real suffering is separation from Krishna. That's mm. the other. The suffering that we undergo in terms of the three modes are not as severe as that suffering from separation from Krishna. Because when we're separated from Krishna, we're really separated from ourselves. <laughs> So why we are not able to remember that separation? It is there theoretically, but uh, <clears throat> physically not really feeling the separation. Uh, when we, I, I missed the first part of your question. No, I am telling that uh, the real suffering is uh, missing from Krishna, but this, uh, as we are in Krishna consciousness, I know that it is there, we have missed him, but it is not gone to the heart. Still not really missing. Because if I was really missing, I would have been always weeping and 
ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ್ ಪ್ರೇಮಾಂಜನ ಚುರಿತ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಿಲೋಚನೆ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ದಟ್ ನೋ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಮಿಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ದಟ್ ಫೀಲಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಕಮ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹಸ್ಟ್ ಬಿ ಡನ್ the feeling is it's there but it's covered actually the covering is the illusionary energy right? mm-hmm. so Maharaj that memory that uh, that Sri Akar Prabhuji is asking that memory to invoke that very the very ah. first memory Maharaj the only way is to chant chant and chant ah, how do we right. know how do we invoke that memory <laughs> that memory of being with Krishna Yes, like the original, like that's where I come from, that's where I belong. So the longing is not there because the memory is not there. Well, that memory you can't artificially create. Exactly. All you can do, the best you can do is feeling the separation from Krishna. Yes. That separation why causes you to want to begin to be back with Krishna. That separation it causes the devotee to become spiritually unhappy. He's happy because it's Krishna, but he's unhappy because he, this is the mood of deeper lumbar separation from Krishna. Uh, and it also comes at a certain stage of chanting. Mm-hmm. That one, tears come to the eyes, realizing that, boy, I left Krishna, now I'm here in this material world, and I'm, what a fool I am, I'm suffering. Thank you, Maharaj. So basically, Ma- we Maharaj, have to invoke the love. Yes, Prabhu. Maharaj, when we miss our wife or daughter or husband and all, we have seen, we have lived with them, we remember. But with Krishna, it is there, but it is not there. It is not able to come. That feeling, this daughter is lost. Oh, she is lost, we will cry. But Krishna, we are lost and come here. Still, we are just happily living and uh, not getting that... Uh, real that uh, f- feeling that we are out of krishna and we have left him like that that I mean, that I mean, crying is not coming simply there yeah, because you're in maya that <laughs> so please bless us maharaj to come as you are like that please help us also to become you know that the missing feeling should come always 24 by 7 and and never do anything wrong be the good child please give the blessing maharaj please the new year you have to give something maharaj i'm begging you maharaj there you uh, go well this this program that we're doing is when there's no blessings we're giving you except for us <laughs> <laughs> but do some prayers for me maharaj please I your class you, itself is a blessing maharaj for yes, us yes 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 how true devotee switch on your cameras quickly maharaj is blessing <laughs> No. Let Maharaj glance on you. You don't want you don't want my blessings. <laughs> Maharaj we want please we are crying Maharaj please we want your blessings. Please well, Maharaj. My blessing is like what what Prabhupada Prabhupada was in India and I had just finished the lecture and a very a respectable couple husband and wife nicely dressed very nicely spoken And the man came with his wife and he said to Srila Prabhupada, Swami Ji, give me your blessings. Prabhupada looked at him and said, you don't want my blessings. <laughs> <laughs> and then he again repeated, no, no, Swami Ji, please give me your blessings. Prabhupada was a little bit more stronger. He said, no, you don't want my blessings. <laughs> You don't want them. <laughs> and so again, he, uh, the man said, no, no. And Paul said, all right, I bless you. Your material life is finished. Jai. And then the man just drifted back into the crowd. So, Haribo, here's your blessing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to take it. But... <laughs> <laughs> So you can bless us like that. The material life is finished. Yes, We are ready to take it, Maharaj, please. For you, it's okay. But now the rest of them, they may not want that blessing. <laughs> Give us a <laughs> shot, Maharaj. Give us a shot. Maharaj. Let's try. 
<laughs> All right. To be ready for what happens, you know. Don't blame me. <laughs> no, we'll be happy. Why would we blame you? Well, everything will go wrong in your material life from now on. Okay. So, <laughs> then you'll get the message. <laughs> You that will be the starting point to go back home, back to God. No, all will go wrong, topsy turvy, or disappointment. But that will be the beginning to go back. Well, you can okay. bless all who are attending okay. today in Bhakti Sangha. All will be miserable like that. <laughs> it gets rid of the junk. That's all. Right. Jai Jai. Bless us so we can tolerate Maharaj. Right. My, uh, if, you want, uh, if you really want a blessing, I'll, I'll, uh, my 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 prayer is that you all become absorbed in chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Jai! Thank you, Maharaj. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Chandramali Maharaj ki jai ho. Yeah. This is all wanted. Thank you well, so much. 2024, all of us have, will chant. You have to bless me also. <laughs> Maharaj, we are your we are your dog in your lotus feet, Maharaj. How we can bless you? You are our master. You are our well, Malik. Well, we keep a dog for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> keeps away, he keeps away the uh, the bad elements. <laughs> yes. You don't need help, Maharaj. I'm also a dog. Amaro Kukura. Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, I'm your dog. <laughs> Tumi to Thakur, Tumar Kukur. <laughs> yeah. Maharaj, your proper disciples, you have got a special power to help us, Maharaj. That's all, nothing else. But just your mercy, your kripa, that's all, Maharaj, please. You're just, you're just changing the whole discussion now into, into this mundane talk about mercy. Let's get back to philosophy. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Maharaj, so, if I, I, I know I made you annoyed or sorry. That was not my intention, Maharaj. Oh, I forgive you. Thank you, Please. Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Quickly, a few more questions. So, Ragini Mataji is writing on the chat box. I have a question again. Um, Vrindavan Das Thakur in Chaitanya Bhagavad says that Vedvyas and other sages will one day in the future describe and glorify Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela in the scriptures. So, when will they exactly do that? In the next Chatur Yuga or in the near future? If yes, how? Who oh, Vyasadeva is Vrindavan Das Thakur. Mm. Got it. He did it. He did it. Vyasadeva is famous Vrindavan Das Thakur. Even Krishna Thakur. Mm. Krishna Thakur acknowledges that. Yeah, the Vrindavan the, 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 the Das Thakur is a Vyasadeva of Sri, of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. What's happening? <laughs> Any last minute questions for His Holiness? I see Radha Jyoti Mataji, you have a quick question for Yes, Mataji. Yes, Mataji. Uh, Maharaj Ji, my question to you is uh, First, we we are ex when we'll feel the ex we are exhausted from the material world. Then we'll start chanting, and we do services, and then some realizations are are coming in our life. So, when uh, is my understanding correct that when our heart will be full of realizations, and we'll do the service with the servant mode, which is not at present, but when that mood will be there then there will be an attachment to Krishna because there will be a reciprocation. When that mm. reciprocation is, the intensity of the reciprocation is very high, then the separation will start. Is it, is it so, Maharajji? Yeah. But that's, usually when we, we talk about that mode of feeling separation or the spontaneous attraction for Krishna, it's more of the higher stages of bhakti. Only can't see, Maharajji. 
Huh? We can't see you. Something no. is Haraj, there is something on the top of the camera, I believe. Is there a cloth or something? You put a cloth there. There's, there's one of your participants who, who has a spider for his image there, and I always like to cover that image. Spider? Yeah, you see it there. Look at there's one spider there. Spiders represent the mode of ignorance. <laughs> See it? Near Vishwanath, that's him. Yes, Maharaj. Why would you use that as an image, spiders? Spiders are, are low creatures. They represent the ignorance and they represent demons also. Demons like to fly, play around with spiders. So I would like to see Vishwanath and not, not the spider. <laughs> <laughs> Guru Maharaj, if I may humbly request you to tilt your screen a little bit because you know you're getting yeah. cut off. Yes. Ah, no, we can see the darshan of your face, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Look. Now it's very nice. Thank you so much, Maharaj. You keep talking about me, I'm gonna leave soon. Oh dear. No, no, don't go. <laughs> I, I, I want to talk about Krishna philosophy. All so right. that's what Let's do that. You are a pure devotee of Krishna, so we will talk. Well, you see, we we're just reducing my time online here when we speak like that. Sorry. Hare Krishna. And there was one last question from Ragini Mataji, if I'm not mistaken. Maharaj, you gave my answer. Okay. There you go. And that was your chat question. There was another one by uh, Radha Jyoti Devi Dasi. She also had her hand up. Uh, Hare hey, Krishna. Uh, are Is it about Mataji Ragini Mataji's question? We already took from the chat, right? Oh, yes. Okay. So yeah. I have lowered the hands. Yes. Any further questions? Devotees, go ahead. I have a question. Yes, Mataji, go ahead. Hari uh, Guru Maharaj, the, our new year, Vaishnava's new year, starts from God Purnima. But we also have this January 1st as the new year according to the Western calendar. How do we make use of this? Should we take it as, okay, I have three months now to really prepare for the new year? Or we completely disregard cherry first and just carry on as usual. Well, if you come no, to India, India, there's so many New Years. There's the Shad Panchami, which is the New Year's also. Depends what calendar you want to follow. The Shad Panchami is New Year's. January 1st is New Year's. Gorpurnim to Vaishnav is New Year's. Other people have different times for New Year's. Day. Diwali is New Year's. <laughs> yeah, the Judeo Christian calendar is the most popular in the world, so January 1st seems to be the one. But as Vaishnavas, we, we celebrate our New Year as Shaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance. But we go along with the Judeo-Christian calendar, we do sometimes. It's an opportunity to for devotees to get together and have kirtan and celebrate. So we take the different uh, holiday designations that are used in the material world to celebrate Krishna consciousness more. Like sometimes we celebrate Christmas for Put a big Christmas tree in the temple, and we put we put pictures of Radha and Krishna and different little deities hanging on the tree. So we honor the popular ones sometime without getting into the actual rituals. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, I see no more questions on the chat, no raise hand. 
So can we close the call, Maharaj, here? Okay, I guess we also lost our host and she's gone, huh? Actually, she has work, so she needs to leave the call. She sent me a message. Sorry, Maharaj. Okay. Well, it's been nice being with all of you. It's a very powerful verse that we did today. Read it over again and try to uh, go deeper into the what is being said. These verses are unlimitedly full of various <clears throat> spiritual points that we can benefit from. We like to sit and read books and do different things and do crossword puzzles and other things that attacks our mind or challenge our mind. And put your mind to the scriptures. Let it be challenged by the philosophy you face and try to understand it deeper. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. So I would like to offer my obeisances to you and all the vice of the summit on call. Vancha